Hooray! We are at the network layer. We have seen some action at the physical layer. We have seen lot of action at the link layer. We have not done bad. We can now build reasonably sized networks. By reasonably sized networks, I mean networks that can span thousands of hosts via this extended LAN business. So we have seen learning bridges, spanning tree protocol there. But we are still nowhere near connecting millions of hosts because that is our goal. So the main drawbacks we see with extended LANs are that they are not particularly scalable, neither can they handle heterogeneity in terms of technology. So the hero to our rescue here is network layer switching. So at this layer, we are going to cover a whole lot of stuff across many videos. But to begin with, in this video, I will provide you an overview of the service model employed by the network layer. But first, let's refine our goal. Our current goal is to make millions of hosts using different technologies communicate. So the problem of scale arises because we want to interconnect millions of hosts and the problem of heterogeneity arises because all these hosts employ different technologies. Just to drive home the point of heterogeneity, these technologies can differ along many dimensions. For example, the addressing conventions they employ, one technology can use 48-bit addresses, another technology can use 16-bit addresses. The amount of data rate or latency that particular technology provides will vary from technology to technology. The loss rates can vary, the packet sizes can vary. Now the goal here is to interconnect these different hosts belonging to these different technologies where heterogeneity can manifest along all these dimensions in a scalable fashion. So the way to solve this is through a new protocol called the Internet Protocol IP. So we have heard this word Internet often, so this stands for interconnect network so the inter has come from this interconnect net has come from the networks so ip is the protocol that helps interconnect the different networks so the internet which is the global internet with a capital i is nothing but a interconnection of different networks it's a network of networks now the credit for Designing this particular protocol goes to these two people, Robert Kahn and Windsurf. So this figure shows multiple networks interconnected via network switches. So these network switch switches here, R1 and R2, are called routers henceforth. If you look at router R1 that is represented here, it is interconnecting three different networks, Ethernet, Token Ring, as well as the, this is the token ring as well as a point to point link. As you can see, this router is employing three different link layer technologies corresponding to network 1, network 2 and network 3, but it is employing a common IP protocol to help interconnect them. Let's see what happens when host 1 wants to communicate with host 2. How does these routers help interconnect these hosts? Suppose host1 application is employing the TCP protocol, so the application passes packet to the TCP which in turn passes the packet to the IP layer. So this is going to use some addressing to represent host2 and then this is in turn going to pass it to the Ethernet layer which will handle transmission of the packet on the particular Ethernet segment and then it comes to router1 using this Ethernet layer that R1 is employing. Now, in the previous case where we were doing forwarding at layer 2, the forwarding was handled here. But now that we are interested in interconnecting different technologies, the forwarding doesn't happen here. The packet is forwarded up and the forwarding is handled by the IP layer. Now, this IP layer will decide that host 2 is attached to the token ring interface, thereby instead of sending it to PPP or back via ETH, it now sends to the token ring interface which again handles the link layer functionalities that are needed and this packet goes up, up again to IP, up via TCP, back to the application. 
Now similarly for if host 1 wants to communicate with host 3, the flow of packets is in this fashion where it goes over Ethernet and then over PPP, then again over Ethernet back to host 3. So as you can see, each link layer is going to handle the technology aspects related to that particular layer. So Ethernet layer will handle all Ethernet related issues, PPPP will handle all PPP related issues, so on and so forth. But you have a common IP layer that is going to handle the interconnection responsibilities that of related to forwarding and routing. Now, does it mean you cannot do forwarding at the link layer? That is not what this says. So you, if you have Ethernet LAN, extended LAN, you can potentially do forwarding within the extended LAN, but that is interconnecting of networks corresponding to the same technology. But now if you want to interconnect different technologies, the only way this is possible is by using a common IP layer, in which case the packet has to go up to the IP layer for processing and back down. Before I get into the details of the service model employed by the IP protocol, what exactly is the service provided by the network layer to the higher layers? We covered this as part of the OSI protocol stack. So the network layer basically says, give me a packet with a proper destination address and I will deliver this packet to the correct destination. Remember, we are still operating over a packet switching core because the way the computers generate traffic, packet switching is the way forward with statistical multiplexing. Now the question is, when you are delivering a packet, what kind of service do you want to provide? One service could be guaranteed delivery where you are saying, you give me this packet, I will deliver it reliably to the other end. So this is called guaranteed delivery. Now there are many such delivery options possible. Can you think of two others? There are many delivery options possible. One is bounded delay where you are saying you give me a packet, I will deliver this packet to the other end before x seconds. You could also provide guaranteed minimum bandwidth. By minimum I mean whatever packet streams that you are giving me, I will ensure a minimum throughput. It can get more throughput also, but at least this much throughput I will assure. And similarly, you can also guarantee maximum jitter. I didn't tell what this jitter means. Jitter basically captures the intergap between edges and packets. This makes sense for audio and video applications where you need to preserve certain gap between two edges and packets. Now you could also guarantee in order delivery that saying whatever packets you give I will deliver them in the same order as you have given me. I could also do duplicate suppression in case something went wrong and duplicates are generated I will suppress these duplicates. So these are all the delivery options that are feasible in fact maybe more are feasible. So what delivery model does the IP protocol provide? You are in for a big surprise it provides a datagram best effort delivery model where it is claiming that I will do my best to deliver the packets but in the process packets can get lost, they can get corrupted, they can get reordered, they can get misdelivered by which I mean they can get delivered to someone else, they can get duplicated, they can get delayed. I am not going to provide any guarantees for this. I will do my best that I can. Now you must be wondering what kind of service is this? How can you build applications on top of such a service? This Would you employ someone who is providing you a best effort service? Obviously not. Now why does IP provide this kind of service? Well, it has no other option without complicating its life. What do I mean by this? Now if you look, IP is operating over many different technologies. And each of these technologies has different characteristics. So for example, one technology may provide this bounded delay, whereas another technology may not provide bounded delay. Now what do you do if you are interconnecting these two technologies? When you have a packet and you want to deliver it, let's say before 100 milliseconds to the destination, you pass it to one technology and you may say, okay, I will deliver it to the other end within 
20 milliseconds now you pass it to another technology and this technology says i cannot provide any guarantees because i am employing random access protocols in which case there is it can take 100 milliseconds it can take 1000 milliseconds so i cannot provide any guarantees in which case you as an ip layer cannot provide any guarantees because your underlying technology cannot provide any guarantees the same applies for any other delivery options. If that delivery option is not supported by the underlying technology, you will then have to implement it. And implementing this tends to complicate the particular protocol. So this is where the, you see the KISS principle in practice. This is the simplest service that you can provide whereby you can successfully interconnect different technologies. This, in fact, is the greatest strength of IP protocol. It can practically run over any technology or anything. Now, as an application developer, you are wondering, am I destined to unreliable service? Well, that's not true. You can potentially build on top of this service and provide reliability and some of these other delivery options, but this you handle at a different layer and only end to end and not in the internet core where you employ the IP protocol. More on this when we cover the transport protocol. So in order to implement this best effort delivery service model, we need different functionalities. One is we need to define the IP protocol. What is the packet format? What type of addressing do we need to use as part of this packet format? Another is we need to have routing protocols that can determine the path between a host to another destination host. And you also need forwarding tables which the switches employ to send the packet on the correct port. Let me emphasize something here. Routing refers to the process of determining a path. Forwarding refers to looking up at a table to decide on which port to send the packet. So routing protocols generate forwarding tables, but the forwarding process uses the forwarding tables to decide where to send a particular incoming packet to, on what outgoing port. As part of the IP protocol, there is some functionality provided to troubleshoot the forwarding process. This is implemented via the ICMP protocol. I will cover more of this in another video. So we started out with heterogeneity and scalability. So let me emphasize how the IP protocol handles these both aspects. So the heterogeneity is handled basically by introducing a new layer, the network layer above the link layers which handle technology specific implementations. By having a common IP layer, you are able to interconnect the different networks. And by the fact that you are using best effort service model, the individual characteristics of the technologies don't matter that much anymore. We really haven't covered these aspects. So scalability is handled through hierarchical addressing as well as very efficient routing protocols. So these we will cover later and only then it will become clear how scalability is being handled by the IP protocol. So if you see the internet architecture has this hourglass shape where you have many protocols at the application layer. At the transport layer also there are a uh, few protocols, TCP, UDP, there is also some real-time uh, application protocols. At the network layer, there is one common protocol IP that interconnects the different networks. Again, at the link layer, you see more protocols. Again, at the physical layer, also you see many protocols. So many protocols above and below, but one common protocol in the middle. So here is a summary of what we have seen so far. Our objective was to interconnect heterogeneous networks in a scalable fashion and we saw that the best way to go about it is through best effort datagram delivery model and to achieve this model we need many functionalities in the form of defining packet formats, addressing how to do forwarding, routing. We will cover all these aspects in the upcoming videos. Up ahead we will first see how do these routers look from the inside.